Patrick Nathan, welcome to this interview. We are now in Singapore in the third international symposium for risk assessment and horizon scanning system. And you are the primus motor in developing the idea and implementation of this IRAS system and symposium. I would like to ask you now, what is the most important result of IRS so far in your view? Of course, there are many results, but what would you point out as the most important result so far? The, of the International Symposium? Uh, this system, what Risk is? Assessment and Horizon Center. Okay. Um, important um, object. Important, uh, one of the most important results has been uh, the creation of a network where we have been able to work with agencies in government um, to help them improve their environmental scanning capability. Uh, we've also worked with agencies in government to help them um, investigate specific issues that are of interest and that are significant to them. Um, our hope is that we create um, a network of agencies which will develop their own environmental scanning capabilities, of course with our help, and conduct their own scanning for the sorts of issues that are of uh, the greatest importance to them. Because the domain experts are the, are the ones who can best recognize the emerging issues and they have the instinct uh, to pick up these emerging issues. We can't do it for them. But we hope to be able to work with them to develop these capabilities and in, um, in a loosely coordinated network where we share information, we keep each other updated on emerging issues that are uh, happening across different domains and at different levels, operational and strategic. The other um, important objective, again, uh, as a result of uh, the networking efforts, has been to go beyond the government of Singapore to work with the universities and the research institutes um, and to work with other government agencies around the world um, in uh, collaboration projects. Uh, you know that um, <clears throat> we work with specific uh, government agencies. In fact, we share our environmental scanning products, which are all open source, with quite a few government agencies out of, uh, outside of Singapore. And we work with the OECD on their Future Global Shocks program. Uh, we work with the, the Global Futures Forum as well. So that networking has been very useful for us because it's provided us constant feedback on how good or not good uh, the RAS software has been. And that has allowed us to learn and to improve the, the RAS system. Yes, that's important. And I also consider it very important that you take the students uh, with this system. So I, I think that you mentioned cooperation with the universities and even here at the symposium. I think that there are some students of your universities present. Is that so? Yes. Um, we decided at the very early stage to um, bring the software to the universities because I think students are the best uh, beta testers. That's right. Um, they are very inquisitive, they are very critical and they will put the software to very good use yes. um, in, in specific domains or in specific projects. So we have benefited a lot from, this, uh, from these um, experiences um, in, in bringing the tools to, uh, to, the, to the universities with the undergraduates. It gave us enough confidence to actually start a three-month uh, master's program in one of the universities. And the students that you see here today are from that uh, master's program. Okay, and which university is it? This is with the Nanyang Technological University. Okay. Yes, good. And then how would you, in your personal view, like to see uh, risk assessment and horizon scanning system developed further? In what direction or what kind of new contents would you like to add to if it's, uh, if you can look ahead? Well, it's a very good question because um, when we first started this uh, program six years ago, back in 2004, <coughs> we call it risk assessment and horizon scanning, but we were not sure at that point what was the connection between horizon scanning and risk assessment. Today, it's a lot clearer. And in fact, this year, 
we are making everything that we do relevant to the world of risk management. So whatever we do in terms of uh, exploring emerging issues, environmental scanning, or investigating the complex issues, which is foresight to strategy, we are connecting all those processes to risk management. Yes. You know, how do you yes. identify risk, analyze, and evaluate risk? And now it's finally coming together and making a lot more uh, sense, having a lot more meaning, uh, not only for us, but for the people that we work with. Okay. Um, then about um, question about weak signals and wild cards or black swans. Uh, how have you been using uh, identification of weak signals that point out to emerging new trends and of possible wild cards or black swans? Because um, increasing interest is being put on identification of wild cards and black swans. So, so what's well. your answer to that? <coughs> Personally, I am very cynical about uh, people who claim that they have uh, a system or a method to detect the unknown unknowns. Um, there's nothing that I've come across personally that has proven to be effective or has given me a sense of the potential of, uh, of that particular system. Um, weak signals, wildcards, they're always out there in the environment. It is developing a proper process and the instinct to be able to recognize an emerging issue either as a threat or an opportunity, as a weak signal or a wild card. Um, it is not easy um, and the emphasis I think should be more on instinct rather than process and method. Uh, we have those processes in place but uh, we need to work with experts and non-experts um, uh, experienced analysts and younger analysts to be able to detect those weak signals and the wild cards. <clears throat> Another very uh, important uh, new process that we are introducing, um, although I did say that process is not important, but sometimes um, the right process at the right time may be useful. <clears throat> we are um, encouraging our analysts to be um, the devil's advocate to be the intellectual rate team so that when there is um, a dominant or consistent view that is um, uh, that's being developed, uh, we must have someone within the organization to ask probing questions and challenge. Yes, to question the, that the assumptions. Main, yeah, the, the, main, yes. uh, the main narrative and yes. what are the assumptions behind it. Yes. So we want to be able to do this consistently, intelligently, because yes. it's uh, it's not useful asking odd questions all the time, but it's That's useful right. to ask intelligent probing questions to help challenge uh, what may be developing as uh, the dominant paradigm or the uh, the major narrative. Yes, that would be critical for foresight at its best. So, so um, when trying to identify weak signals or wild cards. I, I think that's uh, difficult as such, but it's not enough. Uh, they should be, uh, or there should be tools or methods uh, for identification of those things, but also analyzing and trying to interpret what they mean. Actually, I think they are even more challenging tasks, try to Absolutely. analyze what are the possible impacts and implications. So, so, so far, at least, I have been enjoying these conferences uh, two times. I'm and glad. I'm really um, satisfied the work that you have been doing. And maybe if I could suggest something further. Sure. Have you, have you thought about arranging some kind of more interactive workshops, maybe, at the, at the end of these <coughs> symposia sometime in the future? Well, I think that's a very good suggestion. Um, we do have workshops um, between the symposiums, yes. uh, but these workshops have, have largely been for local um, government agencies. I think I take your point. Yes. We should um, have these open to a, a wider audience, yes. <coughs> uh, people from elsewhere, especially yes. the foresight professionals like yourself, uh, to come in and participate so that it, it becomes a lot more vibrant, more diverse. 
coming So we'll out. certainly yeah. uh, be looking at this uh, suggestion a lot more uh, seriously. And because it might be an opportunity, because here, fantastic ideas and a discussion and conversation, <coughs> a critical analysis could be an, at one input from that kind of workshops that participants yeah. could And it's also useful around. to have uh, those workshops to take up the follow the, the follow-on yes. issues that That's come right. up from uh, a conference That's such right. as this. Okay, Patrick Nathan, thank you very much for this interview. It's a great pleasure, thank you. Thank you.